What is up, everybody? My name is Kyle Matovic. I am the host of the In Liberty and Health podcast, where we talk all things liberty, health and wellness, and beyond. My hope is to encourage and spread the message of liberty, physical, and mental well-being. I hope you enjoy all the topics we talk about with our guests. We're on all major streaming platforms, so please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Man, I'm doing as good as anyone can do getting buried by his 13-year-old son on leg day. (laughs) I'm not going to apologize for not being on this podcast because I got to go see Metallica. So if that's a problem, kiss my ass. I am. (laughs) All right. All right, all right, all right. What the hell's going on, everybody? It's kind of weird that I'm recording with Zoom right now. <laughs> I've moved over to StreamYard, and I do most of these podcasts live now. But um, <clears throat> if you're watching this, I believe it will be actually, well, let me make sure I got this date right. <laughs> It'll be November 14th, and that will be two days after I celebrate my one-year anniversary with my wife, which is uh, pretty freaking cool. Um, We've been together for a little over five years now. But uh, regardless, we're not going to talk about what, or, you know, the manosphere marriage relationships or politics or anything today we're going to be talking about artificial sweeteners are they bad for you are you going to get cancer if you drink one can of diet coke um what the hell's the deal with them aspartame sucralose uh saccharin ace k or acetyl sulfame i think that's what it's called and uh we're going to cover the like veracity of the claims and see what really is the evidence that artificial artificial sweeteners are really bad for you in any serious way or like if you're going to get cancer from them and also like the world health organization's um statements around this and i think you guys are going to see that they're not that bad so i did a podcast a couple weeks ago on seed oils and then last night on twitter of course um <laughs> somebody with fuck seed oils in their uh bio had started going back and forth with me and i sent him over some studies a while ago and i didn't realize he replied to me um when i did that but <clears throat> Regardless, um, he never provided any evidence back because nobody ever does because um, a lot of these people just are long on rhetoric, but they have no work. They have nothing to show you. They just have sloganeering and bullshit explanations to tell you why you shouldn't eat seed oils or why you shouldn't eat artificial sweeteners. And it's all BS. And I'm not telling you you have to eat these things. I'm not telling you you should, you shouldn't. I'm just here to give you the information and let you decide for yourself whether you want to include this stuff in your diet or not. Um, I personally choose to include all this stuff in my diet because um, I was very restrictive at one point when I was on the carnivore diet, which you can go back and listen to uh, the podcast that I've done on that. And I've completely changed my mind on it. And even like a year and a half ago when I wasn't doing the carnivore diet, I was still doing more of a flexible dieting approach. Um, I was still kind of going to bat four seed oils and even artificial sweeteners. I was a little skeptical on like I didn't drink Diet Pop or anything, but now I do. Um, but because I was given a lot of bad information. So, um, today what I really want to nail down on is a little bit better information. So that way you guys can, uh, kind of make better decisions in your health, um, journey or whatever, however you want to kind of put it. So, um, sorry about that. Um, let me do a share screen here and we will start kind of just covering this stuff. Uh, let me make sure. I got the right thing. No, I apologize. So um, I wanted to share this first. Let me get the heck my DMs there. We were just talking about uh, the Israel-Palestine conflict. But once again, we're not here to talk about that today. Um, So I tweeted this out. You know what the WHO, the World Health Organization, for those who may not know, considers more carcinogenic than aspartame, the outside air, alcohol, red meat, and working overnight. I'm not kidding either. The World Health Organization is that dumb. And I linked to the charts here below because um, I figured you guys might like to kind of dive in on this and, you know, explore for yourself, which of course nobody ever does. <laughs> nobody ever actually reads the studies or anything like that, but I'm going to put it there just so that way you can't say, oh, well, where's your study or, you know, and then there's the flip side of it where people say, oh, you want a source? What do you mean you want a source? Yes, I. <laughs> if you're providing a statement of fact or you're making a bold claim, you should at least have, at least have some evidence to back up your claim. So let's go over here to the World Health Organization and kind of breeze through this. Um, So as you can see, International Agency for Research on Cancer under the WHO, the IARC monographs on the identification of carcinogenic hazards to humans. Um, And when this podcast is published, all the links will be below. So you guys can go check this stuff out yourself and kind of explore what's going on. 
So here they say agents classified by the IARC monographs volumes 1 through 134. Group 1 is considered carcinogenic to humans, which are 127 agents. Group 2A are probably carcinogenic to humans, um, 95 agents. 2B is possibly carcinogenic to humans, 323 agents. And Group 3, not classifiable as to its carcinogenity, car- carcinogenicity, sorry. <laughs> to humans of uh, 500 agents for definitions of these groups please see the preamble it's strongly recommended to consult the complete monographs on these agencies the publication date um the and the list of studies considered significant new information might support a different classifications for agents that have not been classified no determination of non-carcinogenic carcinogenicity god i'm sorry i can't say that <laughs> or overall safety should be inferred um, so aspartame falls under group 2B, which is possibly carcinogenic to humans. Um, I've even heard my coworkers say this stuff, so you could tell how much this really bleeds into like normie thinking. They think that like, oh, if you drink aspartame, it's going to give you cancer. And um, I try not to argue with people and I try not to like finger wag and tell them, well, actually, because um, I realize they're just not going to listen and nobody really cares. It's too long, didn't read. I already know what I need to know. So I'm going to move on from here. So um, I went over to the classifications here, and what I want to do is actually search up aspartame. So we're going to type in ASP, and as you can see, aspartame is classified under 2B, um, volume 134, and it says year um, in preparation. So let's look under what else is under the group 2B, just to get an idea of how ridiculous some of this stuff is. Okay, 2B, aloe vera, which is possibly carcinogenic, considered in 2016. Um, let me get some other stuff. Uh, carpentry and joinery, 2B. Uh, chlorinated paraffins of average carbon chain length, C12. Uh, diesel fuel, marine, which, okay, fair enough. But um, these are just a few of the things that are in there. Let's go to the second page. Um, dry cleaning, engine exhaust, fuel oils, gasoline. Uh, so some of this stuff actually isn't all that ridiculous, but <laughs> pickled vegetables, traditionally Asian. Um, let me see what else here. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, radio frequency, um, electromagnetic fields, refractory ceramic fibers. Five. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff they have listed here. They want you to read the studies, but we're just not going to do that today. That would take up more time than anybody would really care to listen to. Um, but basically the point is, is that I'll stop sharing the screen here. Um, they're listing them as possibly carcinogenic, which does not mean they are carcinogenic. Um, one of the studies that they used to determine the carcinogenicity of artificial sweeteners determined that I think you had to have like 30 Diet Cokes a day in order to get to a serious level of toxicity in the blood. Um, I, I've done the calculations. If you look it up, they give you like an exact volume. And it's so little, the amount that you're actually getting in like a Diet Coke, a Diet Pepsi or what have you, that um, it, it's like, indis- you really shouldn't worry about it at all because these um, little bits and pieces of aspartame actually have to have a bulking agent to it, which is typically why you have to have all... Uh, can't remember the heck the thing but um they have some kind of bulking agent to basically add the volume to it because if you were to just put you know a whole bunch of it in there because it's so small then it, it wouldn't be palatable to anybody now people say it's not palatable to them which is fine once again this is up to you if you think that artificial sweeteners aren't palatable by all means go ahead don't consume but um let's kind of move on here and continue on to some of the studies that i have pulled up here just so that way we can kind of review that and um we can talk about that a little bit more. Um, so no association between low calorie sweetener LCS used in overall cancer risk in the nationally representative database in the U.S. Analysis of the enhanced 1988 to 2018 data and 2019 public use linked to mortality files. So this is a 30 year meta analysis on um, basically if artificial sweeteners or low calorie sweeteners um, have any association of cancer so this one was published um november 2022 so this is pretty recent um the abstract says that low calorie sweeteners serve to replace added sugars and beverages and foods the present goal was to explain or to explore any potential risk between lcs use and cancer risk using the nationally representative national health and nutrition examination surveys 1988 to 2018 linked to 2019 
public use linked mortality files. Analysis are based on dietary intakes from 1988 to 1994 and 1999 to 2018 linked to mortality data. The, 1990, the 1988 to 94 and Hain separated aspartame from saccharin consumption later data did not. LCS consumers are more likely to be older, female, non-Hispanic, white, and with higher education incomes compared to non-consumers. So um, right there, that alone, I believe, actually does affect mortality if you're more educated than typically. Um, you're going to have a little bit of a longer life, but we're not really going to dive too deep into that. Um, LCS consumers were less likely to smoke and had higher HEI 2015 scores indicating higher quality diets. In cross-sectional NHANES data, LCS were associated with higher BMI and higher prevalence of obesity and diabetes. There's no indication that aspartame, saccharin, or all LCS had any impact on overall cancer mortality. Um, now, to explain a little bit of the higher prevalence of obesity and diabetes, it's probably because people who think that they want to lose weight or who are like choosing to start losing weight typically may start to consume artificially sweetened stuff instead of, you know, your conventional sugar sweetened beverage or stuff with high fructose corn or high fructose corn syrup. Um, there's no indication that, uh, sorry, I already read that. By using non-consumers as the reference group, the hazard ratio 95th confidence interval group um, for tertials of LCS used 1990 or 1988 for um, 1994 for aspartame was 10 for saccharin it was 0.96 and for the 1988 to 2018 for all low calorie sweeteners was 0.92. Um, the null group 10 effects were seen for analysis stratified by age and gender. The present status, low prevalence of smoke, and generally higher quality diets. No association with cancer or mortality was observed. Um, so here, just looking at the graph, um, comparing uh, – I got all this stuff in the way. I'm sorry about that. Give me one second to get this stuff the heck out of the way. Um, comparing consumers and non-consumers of LCS, HEI, 2015 diet quality scores in the eight, 1988 to 94 and Hanes in 1999 to 2018. I'm significantly different from non-consumers. So um, basically you just see here that – people who had more artificial sweeteners typically did not have the same rates of cancer. So let me back out of this here and we'll move on to um, this next study that I had pulled up here, the combined effects of aspartame and acetyl sulfame, ACE-K, blends on appetite, a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. So this is kind of like the top tier of evidence here. And this is basically just to suggest that people who had more artificial sweeteners actually tend to have better satiety and better weight loss. All right, guys, we are going to take a quick break from the show to tell you about the show's sponsor. We are now brought to you by Fox and Sons Coffee. As you can see right here, I got the Den Blend Dark. Really enjoy that. Um, I've been drinking a lot of their Brazil honey prep right here. As you can hear, there's not a lot of beans left in it because I've been drinking it quite a bit. Um, just to tell you a little bit about Fox and Sons, why I support them and why you should too, is that uh, Stephen had started the company up in Michigan to help teach his son about entrepreneurship. Um, I'm all about that. And I do firmly believe that in order to spread liberty in our lifetimes, we have to support those who support similar values as us. And Stephen does support all the same libertarian values that I bring and talk about on the show a lot. So go to foxandsons.com, use code Kyle at checkout to get 15% off of orders, $25 or more. And there's always free shipping whenever you place an order that is more than $37.99. Um, find their coffee absolutely fantastic. And I'm sure you will too. So uh, one more time, go to foxandsons.com, use code Kyle at checkout to get yourself a little discount. Let them know I sent you and support the coffee that supports you. All right, guys, thanks. Back to the show. Um, so in the abstract, aspartame, ASP, acetyl sulfame, ACE-K are non-nutritive sweeteners commonly used in combination to replace added sugars in reduced or low-calorie foods and beverages. Despite aspartame or ACE-K blends having neg negligible calories, their effects on appetite have not been reviewed systematically. We therefore undertook a systematic review and meta-analysis of the metabolic effects of aspartame and ACE-K blends on energy intake. Subjective appetite scores, blood glucose, and incretin hormones, glucose-dependent insulin insulinotropic peptide and glucagon-like peptide. Medline, Web Science, Cochrane Central Databases were searched May 2021 for randomized controlled trials. Human RCTs using aspartame and ACE-K blends compared with sugar and water controls were included, which is actually very important because we're going to see that people who actually had more artificial sweeteners actually did better than the people who just had water. Um, 
Whereas isolated cell and animal studies were excluded, which is what a lot of people tend to use. So like when people talk about artificial sweetener stuff, typically these studies are done by giving mice a whole crap load of sucralose, aspartame, you name the artificial sweetener. And then you find out that they get cancer when you load them up with like 30 times the amount that we would get on any normal basis. Um, and overall, 4,829 publications were identified in eight studies, including 274 participants were retrieved for the review. Aspartame and ACE-K groups energy intake was significantly reduced compared with sugar um, and water. Uh, Meta-analysis of subjective appetite scores and incretins could not be undertaken due to inconsistencies in the data reporting and insufficient datas. Um, data. So the reason why I think that was probably done is because appetite and um, satiety are overall going to be pretty subjective, where some people feel um, satiated pretty quickly, some people don't. Um, when my wife and I go out to eat, just for example, uh, she gets satiated pretty quick. Uh, me, <laughs> I have an enormous appetite. I can eat a whole ton of food, but um, she needs to eat very little to feel satiated. Um. But of the four studies identified, no differences were observed. Aspartame, ACE-K blends and controls. The aspartame and ACE-K blood glucose levels was significantly reduced compared to sugar, obviously because sugar is going to spike your blood insulin levels because your blood has to or your body has to clear all that sugar out. Um, and then and water, sorry. Um, lower energy intake and participants who were predominantly healthy and assigned aspartame and ACE-K blends could not reliably be attributed to change. Um, could not reliably be attributed to changes in subjective appetite scores. Blood glucose and incretins were also generally not affected with aspartame, ACE-K blends when compared with controls. Additionally, short and long-term RCTs using non-nutritive sweeteners and sugars dietarily relevant levels are needed. This trial registered at the um, International Perspective Register of Systematic Reviews. So just to breeze through these figures real quick, um, as you could see not of interest eight studies finally reviewed six man analysis run through that yeah so i won't bore you guys too much with that but we're going to jump over to the final thing that i want to go over um an updated an updated systematic assessment of human animal and mechanistic evidence demonstrates lack of human carcinogenicity with consumption of aspartame i'm only going to read the highlights because like i started reading the models of this and as you can see on this bar here i mean this goes on for a so um like i said the links will be below i'll read the highlights and read a little bit of the um of this and we'll just kind of breeze out and uh, close out here so this is gonna be a little bit of a shorter podcast but i just want to make sure you guys had something to go off of and uh you know feel free to tell me if i'm full of crap or not so um the highlights were a systematic review was conducted to assess the potential carcinogenicity hazard associated with consumption of aspartame. Animal and epidemiological studies consistently demonstrate lack of carcinogenicity with aspartame consumption. Review of 1,300 mechanistic data sets demonstrated overall lack of genotoxicity or other plausible biologically cancer pathways. Collective evidence supports that aspartame consumption is not carcinogenic in humans. Um, we'll read the abstract and like I said, we'll close out. Um, feel free to breeze through this. If I read this, we will be here for hours. Um, aspartame has been studied extensively and evaluated for its safety in foods and beverages, yet concerns for its potential carcinogenicity have persisted, driven primarily by animal studies conducted at the Ramazzini Institute. To address the controversy, an updated systematic review of available human, animal, and mechanistic data was conducted, leveraging critical assessment tools to consider the quality and reliability of the data. The evidence base includes 12 animal studies with 40 epidemiological studies reviewed by the World Health Organization, which collectively demonstrate a lack of carcinogenic effect. Assessment of 1,360 mechanistic endpoints include many guidelines based on genotoxicity studies demonstrate a lack of activity associated with endpoints grouped to key characteristics of carcinogens. Other nonspecific mechanistic data do not provide evidence of biologically plausible carcinogenic pathway associated with aspartame. So right there alone, they're telling you that there's no plausible carcinogenic pathway. That means there's no possible, they have, or at least they haven't found any ways that um, there could be a carcinogenic means 
of aspartame giving you some sort of cancer. Um, taken together, available evidence supports that aspartame consumption is not carcinogenic in humans and that the inconsistent findings of RI studies may be explained by flaws in study design and conduct. Um, despite additional analysis to address study limitations as acknowledged as acknowledged by authoritative bodies. Um, yeah, people can poo-poo that I'm not reading through this entire thing, but um, really, let's just focus in on the fact that everything I presented to you, meta-analysis, randomized controlled trials, they're all exonerating artificial sweeteners. So once again, am I telling you that you should sit there and get a whole bag of aspartame and dump it in your pancake mix or you know, whatever you're going to do. No, I'm not telling you that at all, but I'm just telling you, don't be scared of this stuff. It's the same deal with seed oils. Am I telling you to sit there and drink a whole gallon of um, canola oil to uh, be healthy? No, I'm not doing that at all. Nobody does that stuff. What I just mentioned, you know, dumping all this aspartame or dumping seed oils into their gullet every day. Nobody's doing this. Are you going to get some volume of it? Yeah, I'm sure. But is it bad for you? No. There is no large body of evidence supporting that this stuff is bad for you. The reason why I so hard on this stuff is because it's just not necessary to avoid it um if you want to avoid it that's fine but no one should be telling you that you have to avoid this to be healthy that's just absolutely ridiculous there's no evidence for it um people are going to cherry pick studies mechanistic data but one thing that i've also really pounded on is that like just because there's something mechanistic that looks bad doesn't mean that it turns out to be bad in humans you should look for the data that's in humans that shows like, oh, these outcomes are actually um, objectively bad for people when they're exposed to them or when this stuff is applied to humans. Just because it sounds bad or because, oh, my God, it was, you know, heated and pressed. So now it must be bad for you. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that it is. So, um, yeah, like I said, this is probably a little bit of a shorter podcast, but I just want to get this out here to um, make sure you guys have something a little bit more to go off of and have maybe a little bit more information when it comes to art consuming artificial sweeteners. Um, don't worry about it. Enjoy your Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, Diet Dr. Pepper, as I do all the time. And um, like, subscribe, and share. Hopefully this podcast is informative. And hopefully the stuff that I'm doing actually makes a difference in you guys' life. Um, it's grow The podcast is now growing pretty well. I'm happy with that. Um, and if you're on YouTube, you can now super chat, which is really, really cool. So feel free to send money my way and, uh, I can continue to bring this stuff to you guys. So, um, I'll have another live podcast for you guys probably in the following week. Uh, this is a pre-record. So, um, yeah, guys, thank you so much. And until next time, take care.